Here's a question for you now. Why is it that homicides in the United States are up a whopping 28? All right. All praises to Yahweh by Shem, Yahweh Shai by Shem Rekakadash, double honors to the apostles and the elders of the great millstone for teaching us this truth. And today's lesson is the wave of homicides. And I'm titled it right after uh, RT. And so this uh, news anchor is going to have a, a retired police officer uh, on his show. And we're going to talk about uh, the increase of homicides. And uh, we'll bring out some precepts, maybe in between. We're going to um, do that. And hopefully it'll be edifying to the flock. And hopefully I'll edify myself also along with the flock. And uh, I'll pray to you. How about Shimmy Abshai? About Shimmy Kakadash? So uh, let's get into the video. Percent so far this year. Is it related to the pandemic? Is it related to the recession? Is it the social unrest that has impacted law enforcement agencies who, in many cases, have been told to reduce their ability to fund? Which is it? For more on this, we're joined now by Ronald Hampton. He's a former D.C. Metro police officer. Let's talk, uh, Officer Hampton, about these numbers, if we could. It looks like uh, okay. rapes and robberies are down, but homicides are up all over the country. What, what do you think it might be that's causing this? Well, thank you, Rick, for having me. I, I think it's a number of issues, and I think they're related to the environment. Uh, I don't know about the defund the police movement. I, it hasn't had a chance to sink in and affect, but certainly the environment, uh, we've been not, we've been uh, uh, in the house for nine months. Uh, people are uh, tired of being in the house. There's also this attitude and environment that exists in the U.S. now in terms of uh, certain things that's going on versus the administration and treatment of African-American, other immigrant people and other people of color. So there's an environment now that has sort of pitted communities against communities and that, that atmosphere sort of exists. So you're going to see these kind of things. I mean, I think that it'll all blow over once the, huh. the stress and the anxiety that's... See, that's the thing about it. It's not going to blow over. And you see a lot of Americans uh, and that, that spirit of thinking uh, it's going to blow over. That's because uh, there's been this... Um, a lie that uh, Esau has been telling everyone, like, once you take the vaccine, everything can get back to normal. But that's a, a, a total lie, man. You see, though, uh, this is Isaiah uh, chapter 3 and verse 5. It says, and the people shall be oppressed, every one by another and every one by his neighbor. And, and the oppression is definitely coming from, you know, the top, you know, Esau, Edom, uh, 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 you know, the Amaleks, uh, the so-called Jewish. That's the, the oppression is coming from the central bankers, man, you know, who the earth was giving it to. It says, uh, the child shall behave himself proudly against the ancient and the base against the honorable. See, that's the base man, right? Esau, Edom which is ruling the earth right now, you know? And the Rockefellers, the, uh, the Rothschilds, and, and the rest of them, the Oppenheimers, and those guys, you know? Those, those trillionaires, the ones that print the money, that's on the money, okay? So let's get back into the video. Associated with the pandemic, we know, but the, we have seen these kind of numbers before when these kind of issues exist in our cities okay. and neighborhoods. Let, let me bring let me let me let me bring something else up. You could argue that police officers are angry, justifiably so, for being treated like you know you don't matter and we're going to defund you. You could argue that uh, many people in the inner cities are angry because they feel like they've been mistreated by police officers. But there's something that may be okay. more important. We're going through a condition, an economic condition in this country right now, where 10 million people. People still you see economic condition man. hey hey that they the money ain't what it used to be right well this is ecclesiastes 12 and 3 it says in that day the keepers of the house shall tremble and the strong men shall bow themselves and the grinders cease because they are few see the grinders meaning the jobs are, are, are few man you know and it says those that look out of the window shall be darkened you see it says, and the door shall be shut in the streets 
when the sound of the grinding is low, and it's definitely low, man. Millions of millions of pump, millions of people are on a, unemployment, and that's about to run out. And it says, "Any shall rise up at the voice of the bird," meaning the alarm clock, man. You know, so used to getting up, going to the plantation. Hey, there is no plantation no more. It says, "And the daughters of the music shall be brought low." It says, "Also, when they shall be afraid." Of debt, which is high, and sh and fear shall be in the way, and the almond trees shall flourish, and the grasshopper shall be a burden, and the desire shall fail, because man goeth to his, to his lone home, and the mourners go about in the streets. People have not gotten their jobs back, and they're a month That's away great. from being able to lose whatever help they were promised by the government. Let's Is see. it possible that these people, economically speaking, are simply more apt to commit crimes out of desperation? Well, I think if you're hungry, if you're house, if, <laughs> if you're homeless, if you're hungry, you are, are destitute, your anxiety has risen over the idea you're not knowing where you're going to be next week or the end of next month, then I think that that could put you in the attitude that you need to survive. Survival is a, is a, is a, is a very basic attitude uh, of people and a very, uh, a very basic instinct too. You, you, so people, but, but you know, I hear, I hear and have about police officers, uh, individual police officers leaving police departments. Well, yeah, you know, uh, you are gonna see plenty more of this go on, man. Let's uh, let's get uh, uh, Ecclesiastes. You know, this uh, hey, the book of Ecclesiastes is definitely talking right now, man, to the fullest, man. It's like you can read the whole chapter. Uh, uh, well, not Ecclesiastes, but uh, Second Edges, uh, chapter sixteen, man. Hey. We're gonna go. We're gonna get a little bit of that. It's, uh, Sixteen and uh, eighteen. It said. Uh, it says the beginning of sorrow. It said the beginning of sorrow and great mourning, the beginning of famine and great uh, death, the beginning of war, and the powers that stand in fear, the beginning of evils. What shall I do when these evils shall come? And that's uh, uh, the. Uh, that's the servant of the Lord, Eldris, man, talking. You see? And he's telling about these di these different sorrows and things that are going on in the earth. This is the vision that he's seen. You see? And all this, this is the beginning of, of, of famine and great death, man. And the beginning of wars, man. It's going to be a chaos here in this earth, man. Hell and chaos, man. So let's get back to the video. Now, why would you leave a job? Because they, they didn't get rid of you, but why would you leave a job to, to have no job in the middle of a pandemic and the, mm. and the unemployment rate going up? That just don't make sense to me. So I think people, I think they're staying there. They may not like what's going on, but the fact of the matter is that it's good for society to evaluate its institutions and agencies every once in a while. And that's what we're going yeah. through now as it relates to safety. Yeah, and especially when you get numbers like this. And maybe we don't know the answer yet, but it's worth finding out what it is that's the variable that may be triggering these kinds of changes. As far <laughs> okay, let's get uh, this next precept of uh, uh, 2 Timothy 2 and verse uh, 7. It says, Consider what I say, and the Lord give thee understanding in all things. And, and this uh, understanding is given to the men of the Lord, man. You see, his servants, which are the prophets, man. You see? So, hey, this is the understanding that we truly know about, man. Hey, if, you know, you, 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 you seek the, uh, the book and read, man. You see? Uh, uh, not uh, saying that it has written, but you get the idea what I'm saying. So uh, let's get ready to watch the rest of this video and maybe we get one more precept out of it. And we can as far as crime statistics go, and it's always great to be able to have you on to take us through this. Thank you so much. We appreciate it, Officer Hampton. We appreciate your time. Thank you. Okay. Uh, let's get this last precept here. Uh, uh, the book of Ecclesiasticus. Uh, 
chapter 10, verse 8. Uh, it says, because of unrighteous dealing, injuries and riches gotten by deceit, the kingdom is translated from one people to another. And that kingdom being translated from Esau, Edom to Jacob, man, which name is changed to Israel. Which are you so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans who we would get we are joint heirs of Yahweh Shai, man. You see? So I want to give all praise and honor to Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai, Bahashim Rakadash, double honors to the apostles and the elders of the great millstone, and Shalom to the elect.